Hi everyone, uh, I just wanted to share a word with you um, that was in my heart and I thought it would encourage you guys. So um, it's not an official lesson, this is just something that I want to give you. Uh, it's, it's something about the light, the light of Jesus and what I'm calling the universal light of eternal life in Him. Um, as you know, we're the light of the world and we're supposed to be shining the light of Jesus to the world. And, but I wanted to talk to you about where that light came from and, and the origins of that light and what that light actually is. And then those who believe in that light can now have that light dwelling in you, in us, those who believe. And then that light uh, shines out to the world. So it's a really neat concept. I've always loved this idea and it's just stirring up inside me. So I thought I'd, I'd uh, just share it with you guys. Uh, it starts in Isaiah 48. I wanted to read a couple of passages from Isaiah 48. Uh, for, uh, Isaiah 48, 16. This is, uh, this is the Trinity up in heaven um, before Jesus has been sent as the Lamb slain. Um, so that, that's kind of a neat concept to think about. Uh, so the, these two passages in Isaiah are, are about, the, about the Trinity getting ready to send Jesus in to, as the salvation of the world. Um, so this is verse 16 of 48. Come near to me, hear this. I have not spoken in secret from the beginning, from the time that it was, I was there. See, this is Jesus talking. This is the word. The, from the time that it was, I was there. From the beginning, right? And now the Lord God and his spirit have sent me. So I thought that was really neat. Here you can see the Trinity uh, getting ready to send Jesus into the world uh, to, for the salvation and reconciliation of mankind. And then flipping over to Isaiah 49, verse 6, this is the Father now talking to Jesus. And he says, uh, indeed, he says, it is too small a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserved ones of Israel. So he, here he says, okay, it's one thing to send Jesus, his servant, in to, for the salvation of Israel. But he says, that's too small of a thing. He says, I will also give you as a light to the Gentiles, that you should be my salvation to the ends of the earth. And I love that. Whenever I read that, uh, I read that, I don't know, few months or a couple months ago and man it really stirred in my spirit thinking that this is the universal light not only to Israel but to all the world to the Gentiles as well he says I will give you as a light to the Gentiles that you should be my salvation to the ends of the earth so this gospel message this light is for all who would believe all who would accept it it's not just given to only a few select people. It's it's like shed to the whole world, and 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 God's given everybody the opportunity to hear His light. So uh, so that's Isaiah forty nine. That's kind of a preview. Before now, we flip over to John, and we also get a preview of what's happening up in heaven. And he says in John one. I love John. Uh, we're going to spend most of our time in John, in John's writings. But he says, uh, John 1, 1, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In our hay, in halagas. I love that. It's in our hay. In, in, not only the beginning, in our hay is like the principle, in, in the, the beginning. Our, our, our minds can't comprehend what beginning is. We, well, we know that we can't comprehend anything before beginning, but our hay is something before the beginning even, but that's that's what it's saying. So in the beginning was the word, who is Jesus? That That's the same thing that what he was saying back in Isaiah, uh, where he says, from, time, from the time that began in the beginning, I was there. Okay, so he says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, that's through Jesus, through the word, and without him, nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. So what he's doing is, is he's, in the Greek structure, he's actually equating life 
and the life of men, or life and the light of men, as equal, as the same thing. So here, that's what he's saying here. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. So the light came into the world, and it shined in the darkness. But the darkness didn't grasp it. They didn't lay hold of it. They didn't receive it. They didn't comprehend it. They chose not to receive it is really what's happening. Then, then verse 6, it continues, uh, There was a man sent from God whose name was John. Now this is John the Baptist. This man came for a witness to bear witness of the light. He came as a testimony. He came for a testimony to bear witness, to proclaim and be a testimony of the light that all through him might believe. Now through him, through was that through Jesus or through John the Baptist? This is actually through John the Baptist that all through him might believe. And you might think that's kind of weird that I thought we were saved through Jesus. Yes, we are saved through Jesus. But how do we hear about Jesus? We hear about Jesus through the preaching of the word, through the proclamation of the word, through the testimony of the word. And that's what he's saying here, that all through the, the witness of John the Baptist might believe. Because that was his, his mission. That's what, that was his ministry, to prepare the way for the Lord. Verse 8, he was not that light but was sent to bear witness of the light. So this is the light coming into the world, the light that gives life, right? That's what's coming into the world. That was the true light, which gives light to every man coming into the world. So it's, it, it, see that wording? He says, this is the true light that gives light to every man coming into the world. Every man coming into the world has an opportunity to grasp and lay hold of the light. But the darkness, those who choose to stay in the darkness, they're not accepting the light and they're not grasping the light. But he, the light is available to all. And that's this message I want to get across to you is that, that the true light was available unto all, and only the, but only those who would receive it actually lay hold of that light and get the benefit of the light. But the light is shed to the entire world, to everyone, to every man coming into the world. Um, that brings up in Luke, talking about John the Baptist and his, his ministry. I want to show you Luke 3, 4 through 6. This is the prophet Isaiah prophesying of John the Baptist. And he says in uh, Luke 3, 4 through 6, he says, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill brought low. The crooked places shall be made straight and the rough ways smooth. So he's preparing this way for Jesus, for the Messiah. Now listen to this. This is verse 6. And all flesh shall see the salvation of God. I love that. That's actually the Septuagint uh, translation is what that is. The Hebrew translation isn't exactly like that, but Luke chose to use a Septuagint translation that says... All flesh shall see the salvation of God. That's the light. The light that's coming into the world is the salvation of God. And it's to all flesh. See, note that. It's to all flesh that they shall see the salvation of God. But only those who accept the salvation and accept the light are made sons of God. So going back to John, here, let's flip back over there again. So I just wanted to share that. Okay, so now back to John 10. This is talking about Jesus now, the light that's coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, right? The, all, everything that we, that all of creation, the all, was made through Jesus, and the world did not know him. So how, how upsetting is that, that, that he's coming into a world that he created, and the world does not know him. He came to his own, and his own even didn't receive him. But as many as received him... To them, he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name. So he tells it, he says, as many as received him, to them gave he the right to become this children of God. And then he clarifies that those that receive him are those who believe in his name. Those are the ones who accepted the light that came into the world. And the word became flesh 
Uh, let's see, let me back up, 13. Uh, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. That's what being born again means. It means being born of above, born from God. So when you receive the light, you're born again, and you've now become a new creation from above. You're born of God. You're now a son of God. Then 14, and the word, Jesus, who was in the beginning with God, became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. That gives us a glimpse of what the light is. The light is grace and truth. So the light is life. The light is, a, is, is shining out, and we behold that light as being full of grace and truth. So now I want to flip over to John. I'm going to stay in John. We're going to flip over to John 8, 12. So this is now John then speaking. Well, this is Jesus speaking, but John's writing. So he says, verse 12, 8, 12. Then Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. I'm the one, I'm the light that came into the world to give you life and to give you the Father's salvation. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. So there's Jesus equating light and life. The only way you get life and have eternal life in Christ is to follow him, believe that he is the light, believe that he is the light come to our salvation, the, the Christ, the son of the living God. So he is the light of the world. He who follows me, we need to make a decision. The light's been shed abroad to everybody but those who decide to follow me, he says, shall not walk in darkness. That light expels the darkness. You're no longer walking in darkness. You're walking in the light, and you have the light of life. You have eternal life in him. Then let's go to John 12. He says the same thing. This is right after the triumphal entry, and so it's his last week before he goes to the cross. And he's, he's talking about him going to the cross in the previous verses here. So John 12, let's start with 31. Uh, now he says, Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be cast out. So I want to pause on that because this, this word, he says, Now is the judgment of this world. But I thought Jesus didn't come to judge the world or condemn the world, but that he came that all might be saved through him, right? That's what he says in John 3. So what's, what's going on here? Why is he saying now is the judgment of the world? What this is saying is that the light has come to all the world. And, and now it's up to those who see the light, which is every man in the world, to it's now up to them to receive the light or reject the light. You have two decisions while the light is shining, to reject it or to receive it. The judgment is in the world. The judgment has been cast. Light has been shed abroad to everybody, and light is now exposing darkness in the world. That's why the darkness hates us, because we're exposing their evil deeds. That's what the light does. The light shines in darkness and and they either accept it or they reject it. So this judgment that's coming on, it's the light that's casting judgment. But that judgment is being suspended. It's been suspended now for 2,000 years, and we don't know exactly how long, but I think it's very close that that's judgment, that that, that suspension is coming to a close. And he's doing that because he has shed his light he is using this time to gather his body, gather the church, gather his family. That's what he's doing right now. So judgment has been cast out to the whole world because the light is shining and exposing darkness. But that judgment, the final judgment, is being suspended until God calls it time and says, okay, now's the time. I have my family, and now he's going to resume the judgment, and that's the second coming of Jesus Christ. So that's what it's saying here. Now is the judgment of this world. The ruler of this world will be cast out. And I, if I am lifted up from the earth, that lifted up from the earth, that is a, um, an analogy or, or showing that he is lifted up as in a uh, being lifted up on the cross. That shows what type of death he's going to have. And listen to this. He says, and I, if I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all peoples to myself. 
Now that word peoples, if you notice it in your Bible, it's, um, it's an italicized. That peoples isn't there in the Greek. It actually says, I will draw all to myself. I will draw all, panta, to myself. So he's drawing all to himself. So this again is go, goes towards a universal gospel of light that it is not just for certain people. It is for all. And by Jesus being lifted up on the cross, that is the point that he is drawing all to himself. So then continue, this is, uh, this, this is verse 33. This he said, signifying by what death he would die. The people answered him, we have heard from the law that the Christ remains forever. So how can you say the Son of Man must be lifted up? See, they knew that to be lifted up meant to be crucified. They didn't get it. They didn't know that Jesus was supposed to come first to die for our sins and then later be the, the, um, the Redeemer, you know, rescuing him from from this world. So it's, uh, anyway, it's a two-part thing. They missed that. Um, so he says, who is the son of man? Uh, then 35, Jesus says, a little while longer, the light is with you. So a little while longer, that little while longer is this suspension of judgment. While the judgment's being suspended and the light is cast onto the world, um, that's what he's saying a little while longer. So that little while longer is 2000 years until Jesus comes back. But he says, walk while you have the light, lest darkness overtake you. He who walks in the darkness does not know where he is going. Uh, 36, while you have the light, believe in the light that you may become sons of light. I love that. So as many, going back to John 1, as many as received him, to them gave he the right to become the children of God. Same thing here. While you have the light, while the light is being cast to you, believe in the light. Choose that light and apprehend that light in that you may become sons of light. Such a powerful thing. The sons of light, being children of God. That's where in uh, 1 John 3, 1, I love this now. So then you go to 3, 1, and he says, Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called children of God. Therefore, the world does not know us because it did not know him. What manner of love the Father has bestowed on us by sending his Son to us to die for us and to shine the light to the world that we might become the children of God to those who accept him and believe in him, those who believe in the light. Staying in uh, 1 John uh, well, let me flip over actually Matthew 5. I want to share that with you. So now that you become a child of light, a son of light, this is now what, what that means. He, Matthew 5, Jesus says, Matthew 5, 14, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand. And it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men. Now that you've been made sons of light and you're children of God and you have the light in you, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. That's our duty now as sons of light. Don't hide the light. Proclaim the light. We need to be out there as like John the Baptist was, being a witness to that light. Now going back to 1 John, uh, 1 John chapter 1. So this he starts his first epistle as very similar to how he started his gospel. He says, that which was from the beginning... Remember in, in his gospel, he says, he says, in the beginning was the word. Now he's saying that which was from the beginning. That's what that's I, I believe that first John was written after the gospel of John. So he's just continuing from his gospel. That which was from the beginning, that we that we uh, we know that the word was in the beginning with God and, and before time began, he was with God and all things were created through him. So that same word, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, now he's become flesh, right? He, he's, he's seen him. We've heard him. We have seen him with our eyes. We have looked upon and our hands have actually handled him concerning the word of life. And, and like we know, we could even say concerning the word of light, because light and life are the same thing. They're interchangeable. We saw that in John in his gospel. Verse 2, the life was manifested, or the light was manifested, the life, the eternal life was manifested, and we have seen and bear witness and declare to you that eternal life, which was with the Father and was manifested to us, 
That which we have seen and heard, we declare to you that you also may have fellowship with us. I love this right here. So that which we have seen and heard. So the Apostle John is saying, we saw the Messiah. We physically saw him. We handled him. We were taught by him. We beheld him. And we have fellowship with him because we are children of the light. Now he's saying that you, we declare to you, we're preaching to you, we're giving you a witness of this, that, so that you may have fellowship with us. And how do we come, how do we have fellowship with us? He says, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and his Son, Jesus Christ. And these things we write to you that your joy may be full. He's telling us right there that we can have a fellowship with the Father and Jesus Christ. And by having a fellowship with the Father and Jesus Christ, we also have fellowship one with another because we're all in Christ. And this is where, this is how I want to end because this is the message that the, the light has been brought to all and all who believe are made children of light. And whenever you have children of light, you have, whenever you're a ch child of light, a son of light, you have eternal life in you and you're going to be glorified in him, in Jesus forever. But, but also with that, now we can join together as his body being one with each other because we're one in him. And so we have fellowship one with another because we have fellowship with the Father and Jesus Christ. And that's what I want. That's, I, I think this, that is so important right now. This is why I'm saying this is because we cannot forsake the fellowship of one another. So we have to keep striving and persevering and enduring to not let the government and anything that comes against us to separate us from that fellowship. We need to be pushing forward and have every means to meet together physically as a fellowship, right? Um, it's one thing to be meeting over a computer monitor, but it's a whole nother thing, and it's Christianity to be meeting together. Listen to what, for what John was saying. He, everything that he's saying here is about fellowship and being together with him. That which we heard from the beginning, which we heard, which we saw with our eyes and looked upon and our hands have handled, that's, that's, a, that's a physical relationship that he had with Jesus. And now... Um, that's this personal relationship. Now, we can't have a physical relationship with Jesus yet, but it is coming, and we can have that personal relationship with him, but we can have a physical relationship with each other, and we we can't abandon that. We need to be fellowshipping with each other in this life, looking towards the future time whenever we will be physically fellowshipping with Jesus, just like John was saying here. Now, continuing and wrapping up in verse 5 of 1 John, this is the message, this is the witness that I'm sending to you, which we have heard from him and declare to you that God is light and in him is no darkness. See, he just was talking about now the, the, that we, he's declaring eternal life. Now he turns it into light again. And he says, we declare to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. Or that practice is we, we're not committed to the truth. The truth. If we're walking in darkness and not walking in the light. This was just John showing the Christians at this time who was walking in darkness and who was walking in the light because there were some deceivers in that time. But, verse 7, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. That's, that's what I want to get across. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, if we walk in him, if we receive the light in our life and become sons, light, become sons and children of God, we have the light manifested in us unto eternal life. And we walk in the light as he is in the light. And now we have fellowship one with another in this life. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. So what beautiful words. I wanted to encourage you guys with that message because I think it's so important in this time that we need to be having fellowship, koinonia, with each other. That's the Greek word for fellowship. It's an intimate fellowship with each other as a family. We're, we're, we all come from different physical parents, but we have one father that unites us 
under God, right? And that's that's why we are sons and children of God. And so we need to be acting as a family. We need to be getting together as a family and having fellowship as an eternal family. So just wanted to encourage you with that. Um, hope it hope it did. Um, I look forward to seeing all of you guys soon in person. That's my hope, and that's what I'm really working uh, to strive for. So uh, love you guys, and uh, we'll see you soon. Thank you.